All right, everybody, welcome back. So if you saw my recent video on the Gripen variants, then you'll already know the Gripen is confirmed to be coming this year by Gaijin. It's the only thing that's 100% confirmed so far. And it's also on the very accurate leak list that we've had as well. The one that had the F-15, the SC-27, and of course the two premium tanks and the Tornado that have been announced already. So I thought it'd be the perfect time to go ahead and talk about what many of y'all are going to be grinding the Gripen with, or grinding towards, if you haven't already, the Draken. Now, of course, this right here is the J35XS. It may be called Saab FS. I'll have to check after this just to be sure. But one of the two names they have under right now, they keep positioning it back and forth. And this is going to be your best option to grind the Swedish tree. The other option, of course, is a premium A32 in A that's not really effective for grinding rank A and B. It's an A32. So what exactly are you getting here with the Draken? So this is a better version of the Tech Tree Draken that's at a lower BR. Uh, this was made for export. It's a Finnish version. And there's quite a few things. So to start off with, flight performance wise, I'm going to be honest with you. I cannot stand the way this thing flies now. So shortly after Apex, I used to love this, you know, the Draken, by the way. I used to love the way it flew. But shortly after Apex, Gaishin went ahead and changed the flight model to make it more friendly to beginners, I guess is most likely what was going on. And it actually compresses really hard at speeds, like above like 900 kilometers an hour now. Like you're sitting there, you're pulling 9, maybe 10 Gs most of the time. It does not feel like a Delta Wing at those higher speeds. Now, once you drop below that, you still have all the massive speed bleed issues that you have in the normal Delta Wing without that incredible pull that the Dragon used to have. So you have a plane that compresses and then loses all of its top speed with not really much in between. Now, of course, if you do get on somebody six, they're not going to be able to shake you. The problem is that once you're on their six, this thing doesn't have the nasty thrust to weight ratio that something like the Kafir has, for example. So if they just get you into sustained turn, you are going to lose all of your speed and you're going to fall out of the air just because your thrust to weight ratio really, really isn't that good. Now, it's not bad by any means. It's just nowhere near something like the Kefir Canard and it's not enough to make up for that loss of speed, especially because you have packs of F5s and other planes that actually have really good energy retention swarming you. You are, of course, still faster than the F5s, at least, but not by a massive amount, and your acceleration above Mach leaves a little bit to be desired. Now, what you do get in exchange for this is actually a really good missile kit for the BR. For 10.7, 6 A9Ps is not bad at all. Of course, these are RB24Js, it's just the A9P3, so just keep that in mind. These missiles are rear aspect only. They have okay range for the battle rating. Of course, it... Honestly, it really sucks at top tier, but at 10.7, you're fighting a lot of subsonics or barely supersonic planes still, and you're not really going to have many issues with these missiles. And six of them is more than enough for pretty much every engagement. They can, of course, radar an IRST slave, and by the way, you do actually get an IRST. I would highly recommend using that. And these are going to be how you get most of your kills to be a base. And that's because your gun is going to be very, very difficult to get used to. So we've got a few things here that are going against the Draken's gut. First of all, yes, you only get one. Unlike the Tech Tree one, which gets two, one on your side, you only get one on the right wing. And all those may not be a concern for a lot of y'all, for me personally, I have a very difficult time aiming wops out of guns like this. I like having you know, a gun on both sides of the aircraft, and you're always having to compensate for this. So if you are going to be shooting at somebody, like in a head-on, for example, I would actually recommend going ahead and rolling left or right to go ahead and get yourself vertical just so you have an easier time aiming, just like I'm doing right here with this Mirage F1C. Of course, this won't solve all your problems because the gun also doesn't have tracers on literally any of its bullets. Now, if you do know how to aim it, that means you get free stealth, but if you don't, then you're going to have an incredibly difficult time aiming these. Uh, I'd recommend going into like custom battles or like the mission editor, for example, to get used to them. But in the meantime, just know these have, as far as I'm aware, identical ballistics to the Defa or the Aiden, which is why I don't have as big of an issue aiming them personally. It's just the placement that really gets to me. You do at least get more trigger time with the Tech Tree Draken, because even though they only have one gun, you get more rounds per gun. It's still not an amazing amount, and you are going to have to watch your spraying, because I can tell you I've run out of ammo on this thing a lot. The A-Can was also affected by that gun damage bug that's going on that has been affecting a lot of guns. 
Uh, Gaijin is aware of and working on it. They said that apparently this time what's going on is it's not every gun that has the issue, unlike, you know, when Real Shatter first came. It's only certain guns. So they're having to figure out which guns are affected one by one and fix them. So I'm hoping they're going to be fixing the guns, you know, next patch. Because right? I'd like to have another patch where my guns actually do damage. But we'll have to see. In the meantime, though, the ACAN was affected. But it is still less effective than a lot of other guns like the American 20s, for example, or the GIST 23. You will be getting overall fewer hits and crits than, you know, for example, the GIST 23. But I still wouldn't be that reliant on it because there's been quite a few times where I bleed all of my speed. I go ahead and get somebody in front of my guns. I get a hit in and then I literally only get a hit and nothing else. So once this gets fixed, like, you know, if you're watching this, let's say, you know, two months from now and they've actually gone ahead and fixed the gun damage bugs and great. This gun was really good last batch before the damage bugs. But right now that is just something to keep in mind. This right here is a perfect example of why you can't really go into a sustained dogfight. You see, I'm sitting here at 200 kilometers an hour trying to dogfight two people. My entire team is dead. Now, I do get this big 23 ML because, you know, he had bad flare placement right there and my missile is very close. But you can see, I'm trying to get my nose set. I'm only going 500 kilometers an hour. I've got an MLD right there and then I've got more people right in front of me. So I decided to go ahead and just full commit with some head-ons because my entire team is dead anyways and that's the only way I'm going to get some extra kills out of it. But this is not a carry plane. This is not a plane that you can sit there and dogfight the entire enemy team in. You know, like an F5, for example. It just doesn't have the energy retention and the power to be able to do so. That's not to say it's not a good premium by any means. I'd actually say it's one of the better rank seven premiums still, even though I personally dislike the way it flies. You still get six A9 J's and a decent airframe with flares at 10.7, which is a good BR in and of itself. Now, admittedly, it only gets six pops of countermeasures if you just bring normal flares. So that is the downside, but hey, at least it does get flares. And it also doesn't have an RW bar, so it just, very strong, but very limited at the same time. It's still your best choice to grind the Gryphon regardless, and if you're looking to get it, it might go on sale for the Christmas patch. It already went on sale for the anniversary, so it may not actually go on sale this time. We'll have to see. Just keep in mind, if you do decide to go ahead and pick it up, this thing is not going to be the like awe-inspiring brawler with tons of survivability that you get out of something like the F5, for example. You're gonna have to be a lot more cautious in when you use it and much more aware of your surroundings. In any case, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to shoot for 15K if possible. It means a lot to me. I'll catch y'all next time. So, peace, y'all.